and I'm going to show you guys what I'd write down on every work order. Okay, so I'll just create a line item here. Let's see, O, H, carb. So line number four here, you guys know how we do work orders here. I've got a, uh, a line item four, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to make myself a little chart, okay? Check this out. I do A slash F, <coughs> P, N, M, FL height. So this stands for air fuel. So when I take out that screw, I'm going to see what the setting is right now. I'm going to take out the pilot jet or the slow jet. Boom, I'm going to write it down. The needle, if it's got a clip position on it or it's stock, I'd write that down. The main jet size, I write that down. And this stands for float height. I could check. I always measure where float height was compared to where it should be. And that might really address a customer's complaint to say, boy, man, I'm getting really bad gas mileage. Or they might say, hey, I'm getting killer gas mileage, but my bike's running hot or something. Float height can uh, definitely affect. All right, we're going to disassemble a CV carburetor, go over all the circuits and all the ins and outs of what it would take to, uh, to service and clean one of these and talk about some of the rebuild. This is not a jet or a tuning video. This is simply just an overhaul of beginning to end on the fuel systems. Okay. First thing I want to talk about here, zoom in on that carburetor. All right, dirty on the outside. It's not horrible, but what does this tell you? Compared to up here and down here, what's that tell you? It's dirty. And it might have leaked. Internal. It might have leaked, right? So we got clues. You want to be thinking about this. You want to take pictures of this stuff. You want to be, you know, ready to think about it. If I put this back together, we could have a little crack or a casting problem. And it's funny because, uh, um, a lot of people watch the video say, oh, that'll never happen, or that doesn't happen. Of course it'll never happen, but it could happen. The stuff that I'm talking about is the stuff that'll kick your butt someday when you're trying to go back together, and you're like, gosh darn it, I wish I would have thought about that ahead of time. So when it comes to the tips, just think about the possibilities here. More than likely, this thing probably had a little bit of a leak. So my, my question to you is, do you think you should clean it now, or should you uh, just disassemble it and clean it? Clean it now. Why? So it doesn't get in the carburetor when you take it apart. Outstanding. Okay, now I'm not going to go ahead and run it through the parts washer because I do have the intent to, to get this done today. But I will tell you what I'm going to do is I'm uh, pull the camera up. This is my work area, right? Yep. yep. This is not the place to be using a blowgun. So always turn, get underneath the bench. But you got to be careful when you're shooting compressed air. Keep blow things off the floor, up and onto things. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give a quick sweep of my area here and see if there's anything open or exposed I need to be worried about. I'm going to look for any open engines. Oh, I got this guy here. You can see my intakes are closed up. I got spark plugs in there. I want to make sure that I'm not going to create a problem for someone else, okay? The other thing I'm not going to do is I'm not going to do this. 90 PSI of shot pressure. I do not need that to work on a carburetor at all, okay? What I'm going to do is a light dusting. So I'm going to take this. I would normally be under the bench, but just a real light dusting here. I, I, listen to me on this too. You do not, you do not, are you with me? want to take this and just blow air through these jets really hard because if there is a piece of dirt, or these holes, if there's a piece of dirt in there and I take the air gun and blow really hard, what am I going to do? Blow it right in the jet. I'm going to blow it in, okay? When we clean carburetors, focus on this, uh, you guys watching this, is that I'm going to remove all the jets and I'm actually going to blow through things backwards <clears throat> with the jets removed to clean that orifice or that casted hole. So think about this, you know, this video is going to be a lot of what not to do. We're going to think about how we want to disassemble this and what we have going on here. I am going to go ahead right now and I'm going to remove the, the choke here. Now, this is a 14 millimeter. You guys remember that from some of the carbs you were taking off? Yep. Here's the first thing I noticed. Did you see how easy that, that moved? Yep. It wasn't tight, was it? So if this isn't tight, what was being leaked past there? Gas or air? air? Air. From the outside, it'd be air that was leaking past there, okay? So I'm going to show you how to service the choke plunger as well. 14 millimeter, about every Kian, Makuni carburetor, any of that out there, okay? So here's our choke setup. We'll get back to that later, okay? Uh, now, notice right away, though, do you see how there is a pretty good ring on there? Yeah. And it doesn't go inside, so it probably was actually sealing, wasn't it? Yep because I don't see anything going inside. Look how close it was though. It was getting pretty close, you know, right there, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah. 
the next thing I'm going to do is in this particular bike, we do have to take off this uh, throttle cable holder assembly because of the fact that it has a built over bracket over here. Do you remember me talking on the carburetors you guys are doing? I said that we normally wouldn't take this off. Well, this is an example of one that we need to because of the one piece, okay? So listen to me on this. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to make sure everything on this carburetor has the ability to be loosened. That, I must stress that again. Everything on the carburetor must have the ability to be loosened. Let's take a look at that. So we got these four screws right here. We have the four screws on the bottom of the carburetor, the three screws of the accelerator pump. I need to make sure all that can come loose now because I don't, I'm gonna, pretty soon I'm going to lose my ability to support this carburetor. To have, if I have to get a hammer out or an impact because these are stripped or seized or anything, I need to be able to make sure that they all have the ability to come out first. Clear? Okay, the other thing that we have is I, I see a lot of people when they rebuild carburetors, I even see a, quite a few manuals that say to go ahead and take uh, the bowl off the carburetor, okay, the bottom side or the fuel bowl, and then they say to take the vacuum cap off. Big, big no-no in my opinion, okay. When I get these parts out, you guys are going to see I got a perfectly flat surface to work with, and I could take that flat surface and do this, back up a hair, right there. I could take this flat surface like this and now I'm able to get in here and, and get a good bite on these because I could fully support it on the bench. When this bowl is off, you have the float assembly and you'll see why in a second. You, you do not get that anymore. You can only work on it sideways and I'm never going to be able to put as much strength on there. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay, so I'll go ahead and I'm going to just start taking a look at the things that I want to uh, loosen on here. Okay. Since the bottom's already been loose, can I just go ahead and take this out? Dang right, I can. Do you notice how one of the screws is different than the rest? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Show you why in a second here. What I want you to notice here, this is something's overlooked. Do you see the? There's a brass ring in there. Those can fall out of the cap. Quite a few carburetors, especially Suzuki, they have these. That's a dowel pin. Okay, without that in there, you would smash the plastic cap. I mean, I've done a, hundreds of Suzuki carburetors over the years where the cap is cracked and split because the dowel pins had fallen out in the parts washer. Okay, so you know that it needs to be there, right? Here's what you need to do. Put your finger over this. Take a look at this. They are the dowel pin. Yep. Zoom in there. It has a shoulder on it. So it's the exact distance. I'm going to go ahead and finish taking this apart here. Stay where you are there. Okay. Oh, yep, yep. I was, I was right there. See it fall out? Yep. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's the required dowel there. Dowel pins are this exact distance, you know, plus just a hair. Boy, look at when you zoom in there because we, we want to tighten against the steel, not against the plastic. What will create the seal in here is the actual diaphragm itself. You know, the diaphragm slide here will create the, the rubber seal, if you will. <clears throat> so when uh, you look at this, here's that bolt, and you see how it's actually, a, uh, how it's longer? Yep. Okay, and there's a recess on the carburetor for that to go into. It's got a little depth to it. All right, tension to detail. Let me give you a tip for some metric motorcycles too. There's a fair amount of these caps that actually have a logo or a, a name on it. It'll say the Kian or Makuni, depending on what you're working on. And you want to put those in the same direction. They typically are read just like as if you were sitting on the motorcycle and reading from left to right. Remember how I talked in class how the small side of the carburetor is the engine side? And then you got that ring in there that it snaps into the manifold. And then the large side of the carburetor is your airbox side. So think about this. If you were putting four of these on and you had uh, labels on there, you'd want to make sure that they were reading all the same way and like I said you would typically read it this what you know this is the airbox side and I would want the Makuni or whatever reading as I see it from this side are you good yep okay so that's that's another consideration another thing that you guys will see a lot of times they did outside caps were chrome I bet these Yamaha carbs are gonna be this way and the inside ones weren't chrome just to save money so I've gotten bikes where I go and a chrome one is on the inside and an ugly cast one's on the outside. So you gotta think it through. So when you pop that cap off, here's what you have. 
This is called our slide spring. Okay, there's no direction to this, so you don't have to worry about that. We'll talk about that in more detail. We're going to take the slide itself out. I'm going to set the carburetor off to the side. Let's kind of focus on, on this piece right here, the whole thing. Okay, right there. Okay, on this slide, what's going to happen here is this is our needle that adjusts our one quarter to three quarter that we talked about. Okay, and we've got to be able to hold this in place. But here's something: when I get to assembly, you're going to find out is so important is this needs to be able to float. Okay, you'll be able to see here that this is loose. If you put it together wrong, what it does is it makes it really rigid. It will lock it in place, and then what that does, you'll see the emulsion tube, that brass tube down inside there. Okay, it slides up and down, up and down this, this tube in here, okay? If you have that cocked real heavy with a side load, what do you think it does that brass tube? Bends it. It wears it out and it hurts the needle as well. It's going to take it from a round hole and it's going to make it egg shaped. So we will focus on that more on assembly. But let's go back and we'll finish looking at this. I'm going to go ahead and just dump my pieces out here. You want to be really careful. There could be different shims, spacers, washers. As I look at this right now, I can see that this is stock. The needle is non-adjustable. There's no clips or a notches in there for a clip. You can watch one of our jet kit videos and you'll see uh, um, how to actually take the clip off and adjust it. And then you've got this little plastic ring right here. I'm going to tell you right now is that anytime I take one of these apart and there are no washers, first thing I'm doing is going to the parts fish and the service man to see if they should be in there. These are the things that people accidentally leave out, okay? All right, so what this does, you'll be able to see is this is what holds that needle in place in that slide. Now watch this. Now the plastic piece has the little fingers and supports the spring. Yep. And that's what stops this from being able to come out and it also allows less vibration. So that spring has quite a function, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. And it has some other functions as well. So before I put my slide away, right now it's really nice to look at this. I'm going to tell you right now, this slide's got a lot of miles on it. Okay, see where it's wore off? Yep. Okay, you see kind of how it has the scrape marks on here? Mm -hmm. It wouldn't be a bad idea at all with the mileage of this to replace it. But uh, what you're really looking for, no, nobody ever really replaces these unless this is tore. So I'm going to take this boot and I'm actually going to stretch it. I'm looking to see that it's pliable. I'm looking to see that, you know, it'll stretch, that there's no tears in it. Now, I'm not going to take and, blow and stretch it like a balloon. You know, I don't want to intentionally damage it. But if it's about ready to break, it's going to break. Here's the thing. I don't know why, but Harley-Davidson, these are only like, I haven't bought one forever, but they're cheap. They're like 35 bucks or something, right, for the whole, the whole assembly. If you go to buy this for a Honda or Suzuki or something, they're over $100 each. So if you had a four-cylinder and you had four of these diaphragms bad, you have got an expensive carburetor overhaul. What you're going to do is you're going to take this up to the light, and you're going to pull that around. And what am I looking for? Tears or holes. Tears or holes. I need to be able to have that light be my friend so that I can actually inspect it good. So this one looks like it's in good shape as far as having no holes. For the needle, I just put STK because it's stock, right? Okay, when you do adjustments for these air fuel screws, okay, you can see the flats in there. So right now, when I stick my screwdriver down in here, for every half revolution, you say half. And then when you turn it again, you say one. And you turn it again, you say one and a half, two, two and a half, three, so on. That's what you want to do. Well, to check where the screw is at, Please pay attention to this, okay? Always, when I put my screwdriver in here, and here's what I do. You want to back and forth, back and forth. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. What that does is there's an O-ring in there, and if this has been together for a long time, remember the welch plug was on this? This yeah. has never been out since 2005, okay? This has been in there that long. So the point of doing this is if for some reason you can't get this, if I, this is brass, if that's seized in there and I go ahead and try and screw it in, is there a chance I could break the head off the, off the brass uh, yep. screw? Yeah, yeah, right. It's going to be a bad day. So <clears throat> here's what we're going to do. We're going to, I go half, one, about one and an eighth. Okay, about one eight. That is what I would expect for a stock carburetor. They're pretty, they're pretty lean. 
because we were dealing with emissions. So now I have to go back to my work order and I'm on my air fuel screw. I'm going to write one and an eighth. Let me show something else before we take this apart. Okay. If you ever have a fuel screw on the engine side, any type of threaded screw from this half of the carburetor to the engine, it is, it's adding fuel or subtracting fuel. It's a fuel screw. Whenever you have an adjustable screw on the air box side or where the filter mounts, it is always adjusting air. So why that's important is if I thread in an air screw, I'm taking air away, which makes it richer. If I, th if I close off the air, but give it the same amount of fuel, it's going to make it richer. On a fuel screw, like this one, if I thread that screw in, I block off that hole that I showed you earlier and I make it smaller, and that is going to take and lean out the mixture. So you, you have to think about which one you're doing. I'm gonna show you something else here. We have that screw. Uh, I'll make sure we're threaded in all the way here. Can you see it poking through there? Oh, yep. We're gonna thread that out. Now go ahead. He's gonna remove it. And you'll watch it's going to disappear. So right now in the, in the ollie, fully seated position, we have literally shut the fuel off. You want me to do it? Do Just go ahead and take it all the way out. There it goes. Okay, Bye. that's good. What's the benefit to going ahead and doing what we just did? Anybody know by chance? So well, you can either set it back to what it was or... But I mean to, to, to actually do the visual where you see the tip sticking through there. Make sure it's still in one piece. That is exactly it. Because let me show you this. Look how small this is. Zoom in. You think those little tips get broke off? Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, that little tip gets right. You know what the worst part is? You know where they usually get broke off? In the car. In that carburetor, they get stuck in there. And then if that ever happens, what you do is you grab a, your 90 degree pick. And this sucks because you kind of ruin the carburetor a little bit. And then you would come in here and you would uh, then try and push it out. But what happens when you try to push that out? You're making the hole you make that hole a little bigger. And then what you'll notice is maybe where you used to set a carb at one and a half, you might have to set it at one because you've made that hole bigger. But you got to do what you got to do sometimes to get by. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay, so where else do these little tips get broke? Yeah, storage, right? I love these little totes I found at Menards or Lowe's or something um, because what I can do then is uh, do a four cylinder and that allows me to you know, take a bunch of my pieces here and start to put it together. I will typically do something like this. Just keep all my pieces here. You know, something like that. If I take this heavy bracket and set it in here, is there a chance I'll break off that little tip? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So there, the other place that these get broke are literally just in the storage of it. So keep that in mind. Underneath every one of these screws, this is every single one of these, you're going to see that I, ha I should always have, and the, uh, of your four-piece pick set, you guys, this one right here is the main thing I use this for my entire career. See that little funky hook on there? The mm -hmm. shape of that? See how it's just offset just a little bit? Mm -hmm. I have found this to be the best tool possible for this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out the rest of the pieces that every single one of these has the exact same pieces on a fuel screw. Okay? What do you think's in there? Maybe like an O-ring? It is an O-ring. It should absolutely be. There it is. And it's seated nice in there. Think that's a little bugger to get out? Yeah. Think about this. It's way, it's way down here. Okay. So do you see how this is hard to get? Mm -hmm. Okay. And this is something that people tear a lot. So one thing I'm going to recommend. All right. I'm going to fast forward through this. But lubrication is your friend. Your little pick is pretty cool. I had a student make a really cool tip uh, with a paper clip with just a small bend on it. Made it really easy to get it apart. So um, now you'll see everything needed to make the assembly that you should always have. You got a spring, a metal washer, and then an O-ring, and you need all those pieces. That metal washer is what protects the O-ring from the spring tearing into it. It's uh, just an often looked item that the metal washer 
is an item that's missing as well. So make sure that you verify that all those pieces are present. You see that there? That is the assembly of the pilot mixture screw. You need all those pieces every single time. No Here's a, I, I call this my carburetor hammer. This is, I mean, just a small, lightweight. I never hold it back here. I just hold it up here. You know, I just want the heavy weight of the lead. Now, do you notice how I still have the, I still have the carburetor bowl on? Because yep. I want that support. Boy. A couple things about this. First off, we got a couple O-rings, a pressed in ball here. If I start getting crazy with the air gun, you see I'm gonna start losing things? Yeah. Yep. Hey, this is pressed in, it shouldn't come out, but in a parts washer, you get this good and hot 130 degrees, 150 degrees, that aluminum could expand and that could fall out. So this is another good thing when you're entry level tech to take pictures of all these small pieces so that you can compare them. If I go to put it in a parts washer, I'd put it in a little tote and put it in this position so that gravity wouldn't let it fall out. We're good there. Accelerator pumps off. Here's our float bowl. You can see here that uh, this gasket looks like it is really in need of uh, replacement. This right here is the accelerator pump jet. You'll see here, I'm going to show you how to test these on the rebuild. See that little tiny hole? Yep. Okay, I'm going to set this back on here. Okay, do you see where this is in the throat of the, oops, throat of the carburetor now? Oh, yep. So when we shoot fuel, we take this diaphragm and we pressurize the fuel that's underneath it. We push this down by opening the throttle. It pushes the fuel up that and then down the throat of the carburetor. And what controls it is, I have the rod out right now. You can see the rod that's out of the bowl here. Hmm. But when I open and close the throttle, do you see how it pushes that lever down? Mm -hmm. So you can imagine that if it were attached right here, it would push the plunger we have fuel just sitting in this reservoir right here that gets in here through these holes. Okay, so the fuel is just sitting here. One, one of the holes is to fill this, and the other one is to push it up that plunk, uh, the brass rod that we saw here, the brass jet, if you will. And so one fills it, the other one pushes it on up, and that's how simple your accelerator pump is. <laughs> Two, our bowl is off. Our carburetor here is at a point where it is... Uh, I'm ready to finish off the last few pieces. You guys, this uh, modern Harley, when I say modern, is one of the last uh, carburetors Harley built. Um, we got a plastic float. This stuff comes apart, um, usually pretty easy. Uh, Harley Davidson here has done something that we really want to pay attention to, okay? Go ahead, this is, a, this is a Harley only thing. I've never seen this anywhere else. Take a look here. Do you see that casted arrow by my finger here? So what that's doing is that's telling us what direction to drive the pin out, okay? One of these is larger and one of these is smaller. Now, if you go the wrong way, you will break the ear off the carburetor. 100% you will break the ear off that carburetor. So we went ahead and verified in the service manual just to be 100% sure, and it says to remove from the direction of the arrow. Every single carburetor out there that I know of uses 1 16th of an inch punch. And so my choices are I could take and go here. You got it? Yep. And I could try and drive it like this and tap it out, but it's really, it's really risky for me. I tend to find that it, it just causes more trouble than it's worth and I can break the ear off the carburetor. So how I like to do it is go back to my old trusty center punch and I have to be really intentional to hit the middle here. If I go off to the side, okay, if I get down off to the side, I'm actually going to make it worse because I'm going to do what's called staking it. <laughs> so that would be a problem. So I go right here in the middle, and then you'll see here. You see, did it, it moved, you see it, moved. it moved out the other side there a little bit? I got one time. Okay. 
And now that I got that started, do you see I could take here? Thank you. And now I can for surely get in that hole and feel really confident as I finish driving it out. Okay. That's how you do that without breaking it. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and pull this out. This is called the float. This is my float needle or my inlet valve or my fuel valve. I've got quite a few different terms you'll see from uh, the carburetor world on this. Uh, I'll talk about how to inspect that in a bit. <clears throat> now the fuel comes from the line, goes through here. You can see it goes through the casting, through this area here, out the fuel valve, and then that's how we fill the carburetor. Now we're working upside down obviously right now, but that is the path on that. So I'd wanna make sure and blow through my fuel line and make sure that I don't have any crap or anything in there. The jets that we have left, and then this carburetor is actually 100% disassembled, is we've got three standoff legs here, and we're going to talk about what those are. Let's just start with this one first, this non-removable one. As you can see, there's no threads on here, so we have just a fixed orifice. So that means that this carburetor says, no, nah, we're not going to let you change that. Let's try and figure out what this, uh, what this jet actually does. I'm going to flip the carburetor around, because it is a, a jet. I'm going to go ahead and just walk through the circuit from beginning to end. Ready? Here 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 as i move to the outside of the carburetor it goes here comes up here goes in here out here and then let me show you where it actually pushes fuel is your choke plunger which is this guy is changing the orifice size for hot and cold we're going to allow we're going to change how much we want to let through there okay and then what that does is that completes or closes off this pathway. Do you see where we go right here? And then if you tip the carburetor up, do you see the hole right there? Yep. yep. And that's where the fuel will be allowed to bypass, back up a little bit. The fuel is allowed to bypass, do you see it's on the other side of the butterfly? Yep. So that's how you get a fast idle, is that the butterfly could be completely closed and we're gonna pump additional fuel right into the throw of the carburetor after the butterfly. There's your starter circuit. All right, the next one here we'll talk about is going to be this removable jet. You can see in there we got threads. Okay, someone's been in there before. Does that look a little boogered up? Yeah. All right, we'll get in a little bit deeper talk on that. Now, something I'm able to do right now is I also see the jet size. Do you see that says 190? Yep. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and record that. My main jet is a 190. <coughs> <clears throat> okay, what we have here, we'll just follow this through, is the, the pilot jet will allow fuel to bleed into the main nozzle, and then I'll show you where it actually comes out here. A passage to connect right here. I'm sorry, so it's, it's connecting right there, and what that allows is this is how we get air through this hole to mix, because this is the air filter side. Let me just go this direction. This is the air filter side. So as air comes through here, air goes into these holes. The middle one's gonna feed air to the emulsion tube because what do, what do we call that when we put mix the air and fuel in the carburetor? Atomization. Atomization, okay. This one allows air to mix with the pilot jet because remember we're gonna take fuel and we're gonna turn it into gas. So once again, that's why this splits into a couple different areas. Fuel from the pilot jet is also what runs over and feeds the air fuel mixture. Do you see the channel in there? Yep. So that's how this air fuel mixture is gonna get its fuel to, uh, to, work, uh, to work into the carburetor. Now, where the fuel for this circuit actually comes out for the pilot circuit, look down in here. Can you see there's four holes in there? You see how you can't see any of the holes? Mm -hmm. Okay. When these are set, you usually have the first hole is just being exposed. And that's the way on multi-cylinder carburetors, you can get all four of the butterflies to just have the same amount of hole exposure for what you call bench setting of the synchronization. Okay, the reason this isn't working is the idle screw is off. <clears throat> Remember how we unbolted it? Watch what happens. I'll put this back on here. I'll just make this rough here. 
that's a butterfly. There we hmm. go. See that? So the fuel from the pilot is going to go through, it looks like, you know, about a hole and a half where this was idled at last. <clears throat> All right, so now we got to try and get that jet out. And here's where the, here's where the money's going to be as far as explaining this. I went and I just grabbed a bunch of different screwdrivers. Okay, see all these different tips? Yep. yep. Which one's for taking out pilot screws? Here's what everybody uses. This one doesn't fit too bad, but there's kind of a lot of slop and there's not a lot of support. So I'm going to see if this one that I really like will fit in this one. And it is, it is too wide. Okay, so that one's... No, oh, no, I think I got it to engage. We'll find out here. Yep. I was able to... How, much, how careful was I? Very careful. Okay, I'm going to show you how to do this perfectly. So this is our pilot jet. These can look different uh, for the different type of carburetor. What are the holes for? Air. Fuel goes through the middle. Okay, remember that tunnel that I showed you on the carburetor that puts the air to it to mix it? Yeah. Yep. So those holes are where the air enters, mixes with the fuel, and that's where the atomization process starts. Pretty simple, okay? So we want to know if uh, this jet's plugged or not. We're going to try and do this. This is the one that gets plugged up the most. Do you believe that? Yeah. So this, this one was not plugged. You can see they're pretty dang good, right? Yep. Okay, so here's what I do with these. Let me show you is I'm going to take and do this and I'm going to look up there. We've got tools like this that we can take. Okay, now what's this look like? Torch cleaner. Looks like torch cleaner. It's not. It's in the case and it is a bunch of the same things as torch cleaner, but this one is from the motorcycle industry. This one's actually a K&L brand. We've got some additional ones that aren't in a torch kit. Can you see how small these are? Really, really small. So what I always do is grab the very smallest one and then what I want to do is I want to make sure that it actually is, you know, actually is through. Where people get into trouble is they take this and they just start ramming these larger ones through. And let's go ahead and look at a larger one. What do you notice about it? It's got little splines on it. It's, it's, it's serrated edges. It is a file. So if I take that and force that through, I'm actually going to make the jet larger. So right now, let's look at this with the camera. What size jet are we? Is actually a 45. Well, there's a 5. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Can I see it? Is it a 43? Maybe it's a 5. It's just no, they don't make a 43. Yeah, that looks... Oh, no, it's a 5. Yeah. Look at that. The top symbol means it's an original K, uh, Kian jet. So that's good to know. And look at this thing's been violated by the wrong screwdriver, hasn't it? So that's a 45. Uh, that's a big pilot jet for a bike with stock air filter and stock exhaust. And when we say it's a 45, that's the stamp number, but we don't know if someone's ever got in there and been way too aggressive. Here's what you do. You guys are being mechanics and you're just mastering your craft, right? So one thing I like to do is when these jets are out, go find your favorite screwdriver, okay? Do you see this one here? There's kind of a lot of play in it. And the other thing I don't like is it's not wide enough. The one that we use to take this out, I don't think is ideal for this, um, but it is not. You see how it would barely grabbed it? Yeah. Ooh, boy, it's a good thing I went really slow, right? Mm -hmm. Could I take this screwdriver and file it down to make it beautiful for this jet? Yeah. Yeah, how about we do that? How about we go ahead and fix that and fit that up? Let's just try a couple other ones here. So this one. That looks like it's going to be pretty good. Okay, it's, it's not oh, though, no, isn't it? No, it's see. Not. This is that whole thing, and could you, you know, this, it's a Harley carb. If you're doing Harley work, you're going to have a bunch of these? Yeah. Yeah, go make your screwdriver be done with it, buy the right one. That looks pretty good. Ooh, but we just wish it were wider. So remember, it, it felt like it fit good, but I just wished it were wider. Yep. Okay, so this is a good one for that. Um, we'll go ahead, uh, just to make a point, and we will grind uh, this one that's already modified. We'll thin this out, make it perfect for this, and pull it back into the video. I can do that. As you can see in the in uh, the video there, uh, Brock here put his fabrication skills to work. On this main jet and emulsion tube, we have a couple different ways. A lot of people will take their screwdriver like so and go ahead and try and just 
take it out as an assembly. This one, the, the main jet wasn't in very tight, so I can go ahead and take the jet out on its own. I'll show you what I want to do though, is I'm going to take, and this one's an 8 millimeter, which is a real common size here. I'm going to take and just get this loose. And what I like to do at this point, a little unconventional, is I want to go ahead and I'm going to reach through here and we'll zoom in here. This is the this is the thing that is so overlooked. Can you see how that's protruding in there? Yeah. Yep. Okay, so we have we have a, 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 th a part in the carburetor called a needle jet and then we have what's called a, a jet needle. This needle slides up and down through the slide out of that. Anyway, there's two pieces. Watch what I'm going to do here. I'm going to go ahead and just loosen this, okay? And do you see how I pop that down? Yep. The reason I like to do that now is I'm just trying to get an idea whether it's stuck, okay? Here's what 99% of people do. I've seen this happen with just, I mean, so many mechanics over the years, they do this. They take and they pull this out, okay? They usually, you know, set it on the bench, and then they take this, and they take this whole assembly over to the parts washer. You know what the problem with that is? That piece falls out. Exactly, okay? So that piece there, do you see how it doesn't just fall out? Mm-hmm. Okay? What happens though when I heat this parts washer to 130 degrees? It expands. It expands, and then it's right at the bottom here. It's just about ready to pop out. I'm going to go ahead and give it a little massage. I do not want to change the size of it. So let's take a look at these couple of items here, because this is, I'm really going to reinforce this on assembly. Is she dirty? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Notice the significant difference in the, the sides of that and the shape? Yep. Okay. This side here is the side that was in the carburetor. This side here, the bottom, these can be attempted to be put in the wrong direction just model how this is a problem if you're ever forgetting this one thing you can look at is the bottom of the emulsion tube do you see how the two match yeah yep. do you see how they kind of get they give themselves a nice seat because i'm going to take this threaded brass one to push this up into the car body and that's what's going to locate it okay if i put this like this you know that is not how it's supposed to work but we have another problem by putting it in wrong is in the right position Okay, when it's incorrect, watch what happens. I can go ahead and that needle goes all the way through, right? Mm -hmm. If this is in a carburetor where it can be put in upside down, I'm just going to make a point of that it is directional and it needs to go in the right path. We're recording our jet sizes. And so this is something here. I'll go ahead and flip this around. We have a 190. The other thing that's nice to know is with that K on there, that means it's a Keon or that means it's an original um, jet that Harley Davidson used in this carburetor. The size might not be original, but at least the brand is original. Main circuit. Main circuit right down the middle. We said super important on this. We talked about our built-up assembly. I will try and see if this what will happen if I go in wrong here. Yeah, this one will let me go wrong. So check this out. Okay, see how it's sticking up a little bit? Yep. Yeah. Boy, if you know better though, that's not good, right? Mm -hmm. Here's where the bigger problem gets. If you're not paying attention, if you don't know, you don't have the training, you're not watching these videos, look at how many threads are exposed here. Could I go ahead and crank down on this? Oh, yeah. Absolutely I can. There's, I mean, I could go ahead and do that. My problem is it is going to strip threads. Now, what's happening, if somebody's pretty good with their tightening ability, they might just quit. But let's see what happens when I go ahead and build the needle back up. What happens here? Do you see how that is literally at idle? It's literally plugged off? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's not going to be good, right? Uh, do you notice anything else about the slide? It's not all the way down. It's not all the way down. I'm going to go ahead and put it in the right way. See how much further my slide went down? Yep. You know, look at that. Okay, it's all the way bottomed out there. And then look at the difference on, you know, on that assembly there. Do you see how there's a hole all the way around it now? There's a relief. There you go. There's a good shot of that working. Okay, so these low guys right here, how important is it that you think you need to clean those? Okay, you can see light through them right now because I just kind of moved it around here. I'd want to make sure and hold that up 
you know, and that I could see light all the way through. That's where the air is going to come through. Let's talk about where that air comes through. The air comes through here on the carburetor. Okay, it's going to go through these passages here. If you kind of just get your x-ray vision out right here. From the outside, we're going to come here. The air has the chance to mix with the emulsion tube. And as you take a look at this, one thing we haven't identified yet are all these holes inside this emulsion tube. So here's our removable main jet. Okay, I'm just going to set that off to the side here. We can see how large that is without a jet in there. 